we now come to a very important topic, and that is the two most important requirements of the time. Tabligh, that is preaching, and Tarbiyat, moral education. And this is going to be handled by our revered Dr. Iftikhar Ahmed Ayaz, who is the Amir of the UK. May I now have the honor and privilege of calling on Dr. Iftikhar Ahmed Ayaz to deliver his address. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعض فعوز بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Blessed chairperson and my most revered brothers and sisters. The importance of tabligh, preaching the faith or calling people to Allah becomes abundantly clear when we see that the entire life of that greatest caller the greatest reformer, the blazing light of guidance, Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, peace be upon him, was spent in conveying and spreading the message of Islam. In fact, he devoted every moment of his life to, pro to proclaiming and promulgating the unity of God and the universality of Islam. The promised Messiah, Hazrat Masih Maud salam, peace be on him, narrating the fruitful achievements of that valiant flag bearer of unity of God, says the preaching and teaching of that holy prophet resuscitated thousands of dead by respiring them with unity of God. He did not stop calling people to Allah until he breathed his last and brought thousands under the banner of one God. He inspired them and trained them in the virtues of righteousness and worship and love and fear of God. And he strengthened their faith through the manifestation of thousands of heavenly signs. Some of these signs continue to be a source of guidance for mankind to this day and a source of inspiration for all of us who are witnessing the importance of tabligh and who are also enjoying the luscious fruits of tabligh today. Of course, prayers and total devotion to his mission of calling people unto Allah produced astonishing results. It was the result of his nocturnal prostrations and streams of tears shed in devotion to Allah that the Holy Prophet ﷺ was blessed with precious jewels like Hazrat Abu Bakr, Umar, Usman, Shuaib and Salman. And the same story was repeated during the time of the promised Messiah Hazrat Masih Ma'ud alayhi salatu was salam. May Allah be pleased with him and peace of Allah be upon him. And these devoted servants and precious jewels, they for the sake of calling people to Allah and for raising the name of God and his holy prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
completely consume themselves for the cause of Allah. Islam, therefore, and today Ahmadiyya, therefore, is the religion of preaching, is the community of preaching, is the blessed group of those people who have been raised to preach and spread the message of Islam to all corners of the world. Islam, therefore, is not only the religion of preaching, it is the first and the foremost duty of every Ahmadi, of every Muslim to strive in this noble cause all through his life on this earth today. It must become the purpose and the focal point of our life order. The Holy Quran has left absolutely no doubt about this and has stated in very clear words, Kuntum khaira ummatin ukhrajat lin nase tamaruna bil marufe wa tanhauna anil munkar that is you are the best people raised for the good of mankind you enjoin what is good and forbid evil we being the blessed ones the followers of the promised one we have this tremendous responsibility put upon us and this tremendous responsibility, in fact, is an honor for us. We have to be the living proof through our words and through our conduct of the superiority of Islam over all other religions and accomplish the final victory of Islam through tabliq, through calling people unto Allah with the prayers, earnestness, commitment, keenness, and passion which the companions of the Holy Prophet of Islam manifested. A total commitment to our Maker and a burning, consuming desire to call people unto Allah will fetch those heavenly blessings to lead every one of his creatures in love to him. If a person truly feels and believes that calling people unto Allah is the purpose of his or her life, everything else will be subordinated to this purpose and will become the means of the achievement of this purpose. We have to devote to that purpose everything connected with us. We must therefore carry out a whole revolution in our lives. With the advent of the promised Messiah, peace be on him, we have already entered into that blessed period, which is the period of making Islam prevail all over all other religions. It is the period of the revival of Islam with all its glory, magnanimity and magnif magnificence. This is the time when the entire world will be unified under the banner of Islam and mankind will submit to the will of God, submit to the religion of God, Islam, and submit to the promised one of this age, the Messiah, Mahdi, the Prince of Peace, who is chosen and decreed to bring about this spiritual revolution to bless mankind with the peace and prosperity it is yearning for. It is therefore incumbent upon each and every Ahmadi, wherever he is in this world, to determine calling people to Allah as the aim and object of his or her life. Our status and dignity demands that we respond with utmost zeal, passion and love to Allah's call Yaduna ilal khayre, walo ila rabbika, invite to goodness, invite them to thy Lord. The promised Messiah himself spent every moment of his life in calling people to Allah. His passion for calling people to Allah was such that he said, If I had the discretion, I would, like a beggar, go from house to house, from door to door, to convey the message of God Almighty and his true faith, and do whatever I can to save people from the course of destruction on which they are set, and in so doing, consume all my life to the end, and if required, even lay down my life for this cause. Calling people to Allah is therefore obligatory, tabligh therefore is obligatory and mandatory for every Ahmadi today. That is our mission, and that is our purpose of life, and that is for what God Almighty has created us, and that is for what God Almighty has raised us, and that is for what God Almighty has blessed us 
with the fortune of recognizing and accepting the messenger, the prophet of today, Hazrat Masih Maud alayhi salatu wa salam, peace be on him. The good and glad tidings are there. The second successor of the promised Messiah, Hazrat Muslim Maud, may Allah be pleased with him, said, it is now absolutely clear that the day will dawn soon when all the Western nations will take refuge under the banner of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace be on him. And there will be only one prophet and only one law and the kingdom of God as it is in heaven will be established on earth as well. We should therefore make preaching, make the bleed the purpose of our life. If we have a purpose in life, then we do not need any outside prompter. The one who constantly reminds us is within our heart. And if we have definitely decided that we must preach and we must win, then that constant reminder is the most important factor which keeps nagging us about our neglects and keeps encouraging us about whatever we have gained. So be purposeful and trust in Allah. The most important weapon that we are armed with is our relationship with Allah. If we have that relationship well established, then we are bound to succeed with every type of people. If we really know our God and love Him, it is impossible to hide the love of God from the people we address. The name of God will come to us so naturally and with such an impact on the person who hears us that he would definitely decide that we are godly people. The companions of the promised Messiah, most of whom had meager education, carried the weight of their love of Allah with them. This love transformed their habits and approach in life. So if we are not armed with this love and we have launched into preaching, we should reconsider our approach and prostrate and pray to Allah so that he gives us the enlightenment and the, the strength to carry out his mission on this earth. It is important that we should invite people towards Allah only when we have Allah on our side because without his succor, without his help, without his enlightenment, it is not possible for us to achieve success. That is why the Holy Quran repeatedly reminds us that in preaching, being godly is of fundamental importance. The Holy Quran says, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَيْلَ اللَّهِ Who is more beautiful, more attractive and charming in his call than the one who calls towards his Lord Allah? This is the most beautiful call that can ever be made from one to another. But under one condition, that one behaves like a godly person. If our acts support that call, and if our acts prove that we really belong to Allah, then the call becomes beautiful, not otherwise. If we are truly godly, and we have a direct relationship with our Lord, then we are bound to succeed in spite of the severest opposition as we have witnessed today. This is the requirement of the day, the call of the time, the call of our beloved Imam, Hazrat Amirul Mu'mineen, Khalifatul Masihul Rabe, Ayyadahullah Ta'ala bin Nasirul Aziz, our supreme commander, at whose command, no doubt, all of us would feel honored to shed our lives. So, we must respond to the demand of the time with all our zeal and power, with total submission and devotion, and win over the task that is left over at present. The highest demand of the day is that we all completely submerge ourselves in supplications to our Lord. Without that, the hope of success is no more than the illusion of a mirage. It is supplications which turn the hearts towards truth and fetch the heavenly downpour of blessings. It was prayer which on the day of the battle of Badr blessed a handful of helpless, unlaced, resourceless, humble companions of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with glorious victory over an arrogant army of thousands of well-trained and well-equipped enemies. It was indeed prayer 
which rising from the pristine pure heart of the holy prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam effused the heavenly rays of light which turned dark arabia into a glowing lamp of spiritual brightness it is again prayer which rising from the heart of hazrat masih maud alaihi salam peace be on him and his successors has today generated a spiritual revolution all over the world another pressing need of the time is to transform ourselves into a model of islamic society we need to conduct ourselves in such a way that we reflect the beauties of the islamic teachings and values calling unto allah has its basis in amila salihan the righteous deeds our deeds and practices must manifest the attributes of god what we say must attest what we do we have to demonstrate to people that god has blessed us with a far superior social structure and provided us with an excellent code of conduct so that others can see the value of joining us and benefiting from the beauties of an of an islamic environment our men and our women our boys and girls should become the epitome the moving kindling lights of islam we are the custodians of the legacy of those brilliant practices manifested by companions of hazrat muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the promised messiah alaihi salam for the guidance of mankind we have a crucial transmission role to play we have to make sure that we hand on to future generations and the new comers into ahmadiyat in pristine purity the practices which make up the core of an islamic society hazrat amirul mu'minin ayyadullah taala bin rasul laziz has repeatedly reminded us of this necessity in his recent sermons he has said it is not enough to tell people what to do but to demonstrate the conduct righteous deeds are essential we must become the living examples of ahmadiyat it is only then that our calling people to allah will become meaningful and the world will be pulled towards us the companions of hazrat masih maud alaihi salam were not highly educated the fact is that most of them were illiterate but they incurred such a revolution in their lives and behavior and they became such splendid models of islamic teachings that even without using their tongues through spiritual charisma they magnetized thousands into the fold of islam the time demands that we clean up and set and beautify our spiritual abode so that people are attracted to enter into it to find the peace and composure which can only be found under the shelter of their maker and the holy prophet of islam prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam another urgent requirement of the time therefore for all of us is to understand clearly the fundamentals of tarbiyah moral training and teaching and upbringing of our children and all those who are associated with us the importance of tarbiyah and its being foremost can be judged from the fact that as soon as a child is born the very first words said in its ears are the call for prayers or the azan and the ikama in other words tarbiyah begins on the very first day in fact tarbiyat begins even before the mother leaves her imprint and influence on the infant yet to be born hazrat khalifatul masi may allah be pleased with him hazrat khalifatul masi the first may allah be pleased with him once said i love the holy quran and one reason for this is that while i was yet in my mother's womb I used to listen to my mother reciting the Holy Quran and these words must have left an impact on me. He also used to say that because his father was interested in reading books he too began to develop a love for reading books. He read thousands of books and benefited greatly from them. Thus on the first rung of the ladder of tarbiyah stand the parents and taqwa or righteousness to lend a helping hand. if the parents lead a holy and pious life then the children too will grow up pure and pious this is because the first teachers of the child are the parents and the first school is their own home 
they follow in the footsteps of the parents. The promised Messiah salam, apart from offering prayers for his children, inculcated in them the habit to pray. Hazrat Nawab Mubarakah Begum Sahiba, the daughter of the promised Messiah, narrates that the promised Messiah, peace be on him, used to often ask her to pray for the big ticket issues and then used to inquire whether she had been blessed with some dream. At that time, she could have been no more than 11 years of age. The promised Messiah, peace be on him, says, my condition is such that there is no prayer of mine in which I do not remember my friends and family and wife in my prayers. Thirdly, it should also be remembered that tabligh and tarbiyat are like two peas. They are interconnected. Hazrat Amirul Mu'mineen, Khalifatul Masihul Rabe, Ayyadahullah Ta'ala bin Nasr al said that the success in tabligh is directly related to our success and achievement and attainment in tarbiyat. Both tabligh and tarbiyat always go hand in hand. The progress of Ahmadiyyad is dependent upon these aspects, working like hands in the gloves. Hazrat Khalifatul Masih the second, Razi Allah Ta'ala Anho said, there are two very important tasks essential for the progress of Ahmadiyyad. One is education and tarbiyat and training, and the second is preaching and publications. Without them, the Jamaat cannot spread, nor is there any benefit in its spread. The Jamaat cannot gain numerical strength without the belief that is spreading the word of God, and there is nothing to be gained in the spread of Jamaat without tarbiyat or reformation. Suppose for a moment that Ahmadis managed to spread out all over the world, but the religious, political, cultural, and intellectual environment remains just as corrupt as it was before, then what use is the spread of Ahmadiyyad? If Ahmadis do not bear that hallmark and are not charged with that spirit which Islam wants to create, then what use will that be for the rest of mankind if in lieu of one cruel tyrant another despot takes his place? Thus, both education and training are two extremely important essential tasks facing Jamaat Ahmadiyya. He also said, it is incumbent on each one of us that the teachings of Islam should continue to be preserved in our future generation. The Holy Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, has encapsulated this so beautifully that one is truly amazed. Everyone knows that in the reformation of the sons and daughters, the daughters rank foremost because they are the mothers of the next generation and their overbearing influence on their children is very heavy. This is the reason why the nation which does not pay attention to the reformation of the ladies also kisses goodbye to the reformation of the men of that nation. But the nation which cares about the reformation of both men and women safeguards itself completely from danger. It is a great pity that people leave their children unprotected as if they were weeds which would grow by themselves. The result is that if the father was good, the son would turn out to be bad. Then habits are picked up from the society. As far as the reformation of children is concerned, even the best amongst men is rendered totally powerless if that man's environment is not healthy and spiritual and those around him do not possess high moral values and do not have refined habits. If the entire nation joins together, if the entire community joins together and reforms its habits, then the result will be that the generation which follows will have a resolute regime. It will stand on a higher moral ground and its national pride will be so strong that no other nation will be able to stand against it. In numerous sermons and addresses, because the founding stone of Tarbiyat is the habit of telling the truth under all conditions and circumstances, Hazrat Khalifatul Masih IV 
may Allah prolong his life, has instructed the Jamaat to adhere to the truth always. In this connection, I quote and extract from the pronouncements of Hazrat Khalifatul Masih the second, may Allah be pleased with him. And he said, the most important requirement of the day is truth, because that is the founding stone of Tarbiyat. The prophets laid particular emphasis on this obligation. It is the cornerstone of human moral values. Throughout history, there has never been any occasion when there has not been any need for speaking the truth and straightforwardness. Even amongst the disbelievers, these values are greatly cherished, and perhaps on a rare occasion have these values been ignored. But in this day and age, when it comes to the national interest or political interest in the present world, a white lie is not treated as a lie or falsehood, but it has become integral and a necessity. This disease has spread so much in some people that they swear on oaths in their stride and seem annoyed that their lie is not acknowledged by others as a truth. Truth is a valuable commodity. Moreover, it is not a difficult thing or to put it in today's lingo, it is no problem but the easiest thing. The greatest wealth that we can offer, the greatest wealth that we can offer and the greatest treasure that we can leave behind for our children and families is prayers. The Holy Quran has taught us a beautiful prayer for that purpose. In Surah Al-Furqan, God Almighty says, وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا حَبْلَنَا مِن نَزْوَاجَنَا وَزُرِّيَاتَنَا قُرَّةَ عَيُنٍ وَجْعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا And those who say, Our Lord, grant us of our wives and children the delight of our eyes and make us a model for the righteous. This is a beautiful prayer which each and every one of us must repeatedly offer every day. Hazrat Khalifatul Masih the fourth, Ayyadullah Ta'ala Bishr Aziz states in his commentary, in his Darsul Quran on this verse, he said, keep praying to God Almighty that he keeps them pious, he keeps our families, he keeps our wives, he keeps our children pious and on the path of righteousness during their life and after their death amongst their progeny and may they always be a source of comfort and soothe the eyes or as the saying goes a sight for sore eyes we have been taught in this verse that God's holy people keep praying for spiritual and material progress of their progeny so that the light of belief which illumined their hearts should not be confined to them alone but should also continue to glow till the day of judgment there should be no age when their progenies or those that follow them or their students should ever become wholly inclined towards materialism but should give precedence to religion over all worldly pursuits. That is why in the conditions of bayat, Hazrat Masih Maud also asked us to pledge that we shall always give precedence to faith than to the needs of this world. The Holy Quran has mentioned a quality of the character of Hazrat Ismail. May Allah shower his blessings upon him in these words. The Holy Quran says, Wakana Yamuro Ahlahu Bisalate was Zaka, Wakana in the Rabbihi Marzia. He used to enjoy prayer and alms giving on his people, and he was well pleasing to his Lord. Hazrat Ismail used to enjoy prayer and arms giving upon his wife, children and relations so that the kingdom of the one God always prevails in the world and the observance of prayers and arms giving is preserved till eternity. The responsibility of every believer is that whereas he should never be neglectful of his duty towards the reformation of his family, he should also engage in earnest prayers for them. The promised Messiah Islam, states Prayer is like a beacon for man. An opportunity for supplication arises five times. Some prayer will be accepted. This is why you should adorn your prayers. And this is the most dear to me. He said, prayers is a high standard for man's righteous life. 
the person who engages fervently in prayers before God's majestic presence remains in peace, just as a child screams in the lap of its mother, yet feels the affection and love of its mother. The same condition must arise in the course of prayer. The one who wails in agony in prayers places itself, places itself in the caring lap of God Almighty. Remember that the one who has not enjoyed the deliciousness, the deliciousness of prayers has not known the real joys of faith. In the world of today, we are the generation, we are the generation granted the enviable honor to lead mankind to unity with one God and bring them under the wings of the promised Messiah alayhi salam. For there is nowhere else where eternal peace can be found. And this can only be done through each one of us totally devoting to tabliq or calling people unto Allah and tarbiyat and that is our own reformation and the proper upbringing and education and training of our own families, of our own children and all those who are under our charge or associated to us. We shall not shrink this responsibility. We welcome it. I do not believe that any of us would exchange places with any other people or any other generation, whatever the extent of sacrifices. The energy, the faith, the devotion which we bring to this endeavor will light our homes, our community and the entire world with the radiance of Ahmadiyyat, with the glow of Islam. And so my dearest brothers and sisters, let us resolve to offer the same high standard of strength and sacrifice which our beloved master, Hazrat Amir Mu'mineen, Khalifatul Masihur Rabeh, Ayyadullah bin Aziz, our master is expecting of us with a good conscience, our only sure reward, with history, the final judge of our deeds. Let us go forth to lead humanity, praying for Allah's blessings and his help, but knowing that here on earth, God's work must truly be our own by his grace. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ